It's five o'clock. I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, monthly meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Indian River County Hospital District. Welcome to everybody that's in the audience here. Welcome to everybody watching TV, and especially Miss Alma Lee, if you're out there. Welcome. <laughs> I know she is. Okay, we will start tonight with our invitation. Um, Pastor Derek West of Genesis Church. Welcome. God in heaven, I thank you for this wonderful community. Lord, I'm also thankful for all that are gathered here today, that they care about it as much as I do. Please let that love guide our conversation tonight so that we can better serve our community. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. And I will do the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving into the consent agenda, uh, I'd like a motion for the approval of the first public budget hearing meeting minutes dated September 13th, the budget discussion meeting minutes dated September 26th, the special meeting minutes dated September 27th, the final public budget <laughs> hearing meeting minutes dated September 27th, the regular monthly meeting minutes dated September 27th, and an October disbursement of, Mr. Jones? Uh, $875,545.19. Can I hear a motion? So moved. Moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, reports from myself, just this has been a uh, very busy month and a half here um, between all of the budget meetings that we've had and finally <laughs> working some of all that out, as well as the uh, Cleveland Clinic meetings that we've had so it's been a very busy but a very good month for us so far and now we have a lot of other things to do <laughs> and move on to so we will continue to do that um, Jennifer okay thank you madam chair I will echo that it has been a very busy month and we are continuing to work on the Cleveland Clinic transaction moving towards closing now that the boards have approved uh, the transaction um, in addition, we've been working to complete our funded agency agreements now that the budget has been finalized for the fiscal year. Um, we are turning our attention to the Gifford Health Center and that process that was discussed at our meeting yesterday with regard to a request for information. And also, um, as part of that, uh, several of us, including myself, recently attended a Gifford Health Council meeting uh, one evening, I believe it was last week. Um, we are also turning our attention to strategic planning for the coming year for the district and as part of that I met with Michael Felix regarding that process and the steps that will be involved with that as he anticipates. In addition, we had a partners collaborative meeting um, in the last couple of weeks that I did attend. So quite a lot going on and uh, a little bit more to report this month besides just the, the Cleveland Clinic transaction. Does anybody have any questions? Hearing none, we'll move into the financial statement review. Mr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, fiscal year 2017-18 has now come to an end. As we've discussed several times over the last uh, nine months or so, this year's budgets were very tight. Uh, the district funded about almost a million six of this year's budget out of reserves carried over from previous years, enabling the trustees to minimize the millage rate on behalf of taxpayers during a year in which we experienced some unusual costs to fund. The partnership process, uh, for example, leading to the selection of Cleveland Clinic to operate the hospital in the future and to absorb special expenses to maintain buildings owned by the district and leased to the VNA and the health department, just to name a couple. Netting out expenses versus revenues, the district had about three and a half million in the bank at the end of the fiscal year, less 875,500 and change that we just uh, spent, or at least approved. So that leaves a balance of a little over 2.7 million, or almost 2.7 million. Normally we maintain about one and a half million to fund our operations in October and November, 
Uh, and so net net we have about 1.2 million to manage contingencies which may include things like the volume increases at IRMC, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later, uh, as well as some other uh, issues that might come up. So in short, the district remains in sound financial condition and is in a position to fund its obligations. So any questions? Okay. Good. We'll have more discussion about this. Yeah, we will. Later. Yes, we will. Okay. Uh, the executive director report, Amory. I um, also don't have really a lot to add. I've been obviously working through the uh, Gifford Health Council work, the budgets that we have just approved. Um, we, I have met a couple of different times with Michael Felix in his presentation to you yesterday for the start of the strategic plan. So we have a lot of things coming up in the next month or so scheduled and scheduling for some individual interviews and uh, community discussion groups to help lead our work through that. The community health needs assessment was presented at the medical center to a large part of the community leaders um, within the public on last Friday, I guess, or Thursday maybe. And so we will use that to inform us and work our way through the next year. But other than that, I think the um, Human Services Building work is, I think, moving slowly, but um, I see that all of the outside is done. I'm not sure if there's not a holdup or something on the um, bathroom areas, but I have been trying to, I will reach Bill Bryant tomorrow to see what <coughs> is happening there. I thought it would be a little bit further along this month, so um, I will get back on that. Otherwise, I... Don't have anything else to add. Remind me again when the health needs assessment, the, the whole thing is available. It should be two weeks about. Next week we're going to meet to talk about next steps and and hopefully after that would have a full report that we'd be able to distribute to all of those that were in attendance and of course all of our funded agencies and others will be interested in that information. Michael Felix would also like to use some of that information as well, but I think at least a couple, two or three weeks in a row. Rick's, his work, okay. Okay, good. There's a lot of detail in there that I think is good for all of us to understand. Okay. <coughs> Any questions for Emory? Okay, IRMC monthly report. George, do you get the dubious honor? Very dubious. <laughs> oh, I, I promised my team I'd be in the best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon all. How are you doing? Good. So what I want to talk to you about are three uh, subjects. One is the indigent care uh, results through uh, September 2018 that uh, Mr. Allen, uh, Mr. Jones talked about. Um, I wanted to talk about the results for August and I wanted to talk about the proposed budget for 2019. So starting off, how do I click on, it disappeared. Ah, there we are. Okay. <coughs> well, we got one. Okay. Do I want to get to this one? Oh, it's, I, it's all the way towards the back. That's what you want, right? Okay, so we're missing two of the documents. So, we go to the handouts. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the first uh, subject is the 2018 indigent care results. I wanted to present to you the numbers as I stand right now. Um, talk about the volumes that we- Which are you using? Sorry. The last page. The last page oh, there. okay, thank you. I could hold up the camera. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so what we're going to talk about again are the volumes and the financial results related to that. <clears throat> the first column is the actual volume that we received. Oh, there it is. If you tilt your head. <laughs> In the meantime. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> so the first column is uh, 12 months ended um, September 2018. Um, the second column is the budget that we presented uh, for 2018. The third column are the 12 months ended the year before. Uh, the fourth column was our original request. Um, and we look at the volumes as the first section at the top. Inpatient acute days, we ended up with 2,052. We had budgeted for 1,241, so there was a significant uh, increase in utilization for inpatient medical days. Uh, psychiatric inpatient days came in at 974, um, which is less than the budget. The budget was at 1434. <coughs> Outpatient visits came in at 3138, uh, slightly higher than what we had budgeted for. And emergency visits came in at 4167, um, about a thousand more than what we had budgeted for at uh, 3099. When you apply the formulas and come up with the reimbursement, our inpatient days came in at $4.1 million. Uh, with the increased volume, we budgeted 2.6 million, so there's a variance of almost a million and a half. The inpatient days came in at s slightly under 750,000. <coughs> we budgeted 1.1 million, so there was a savings of about $360,000. Uh, outpatient medical surgical visits came in at 1.5 million. We had budgeted 1.4, and so there's about $100,000 overage related to that. And in the emergency room, we budgeted, we came in at 1.58 million, uh, budgeted 1.22 million with a $365,000 overage. In total, our overage comes in at about $1.6 million. Um, and so that's, again, high utilization. It's the results that we see now. Um, I will remind you that we do not control who comes in. We treat everyone. Um, but there was clearly an increase in utilization. So any questions? Uh, yeah, it's, while, while you're on that, uh, right above that, you've got uh, uh, outpatient visits. Yes. And that would be the number, I guess, of discrete patient, patients that came in. Uh, there may be duplicate patients, but it's the number of visits people uh, patients came in. Okay, so that shows uh, thirty one hundred and eight versus. Now, does that equate uh, to the same thing as uh, outpatient medical surgical visits, or is that a difference? Because it's not quite the same terminology. All the rest of them are the same, but it's the same. It is the same. It is, yes. So on balance, you had uh, thirty one hundred and eight. Patients that last year, yeah, last year. That's correct. Okay. So right. you had thirty more this year, but it's more cost. Right. So within that, there's a wide range of yeah, services. So, which includes uh, oncology and surgery. I think we've seen an increase related to that. So it's the mix. Yeah, it's a higher mix. A, a, a All right. So it's not just volume; it's mix. Now what? It's not just volume, pure volume. It's mi it's the mix. Yeah, because volume's going volume up, but the volume. price per volume is going up as well. So it's a more intense. I believe so. Okay. Any other comments or questions related to this? Is this the, um, discussion on the inpatient days? We're going to pay now. The inpatient days. What was your on the inpatient days? from um, the actual versus 2018. Is that, I mean, in this day and age, it seems that there's less inpatient stay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just questioning that, that seems to be one of the highest. <laughs> Correct. Changes. Yeah. So, I would so again, we can't control what comes through our doors. I believe, I don't know if the overall length of stay is going up or there's more members coming in or more patients coming in. <clears throat> but it is a much higher utilization. We've actually seen an increase 
across the board at the hospital or utilization at the hospital. So some of that's going on and I believe there's some shift towards more district eligible patients as well. So George, are we, the budget variance is 1.6. The IRMC receivables is 1.4, right? What, That's what, correct. what are we short? <laughs> so I believe the, um, I believe what we've been funded slightly over, over the budget. So we've held back payments over the last couple of months. I think at that point, we've been paid a little bit more than what the budget is. Okay. Right, so right. we had budgeted um, 6.358 is what we've what actually been short paid. to what your actual is, is what it. Correct. Okay. We have a receivable Not of 1.46 1. 1. 1. 1. out there. The budget variance. Okay. Okay. Have these been all audited numbers, like we know yeah. for sure this is. There's, yeah. there's been some work done, very fine work done with uh, Anne Marie and Warren to go through what the numbers are. I do think there's opportunity to do a deeper dive. Last year we went through a process of bringing in your CPA to do a review of what's going on. There is some transition that occurs with each patient. Sometimes they find other insurance and we have to reverse out and so there's some work that we need to do that. Um, and I think we need to give us a little time to make sure that the numbers settle down and then we can come up with a final number if that's okay with the group. Instead of paying the 1.4 right Correct. now, we're approving it. Let's, Correct. Let's figure it out completely and then. That's next month maybe. So the proposal, because right. at our meeting, you were going to come in with that proposal. So are we saying we're going to put that off for another month? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what I thought. I actually called George today to talk about this. And uh, because there's another factor that I think complicates this, it's sort of technical, but, but, but every year, uh, with our close relationship for whatever it is, 30 plus years with the hospital, uh, they send in unaudited numbers. Uh, we pay them as a request, and then we set, settle things up, you know, when, they, when we get audited numbers. And then in addition, there's an occasional circumstance where somebody comes in that looks like they meet the district qualifications, and it turns out they don't. For example, somebody comes in that they don't think Medicaid's going to cover, but turns out they do. And so they end up uh, settling all that out in a, in, a, in a transaction that we call or refer to as reversals. And, but turns out reversals are like on average about 18% of the total billing. So there's a lot of- Which is a good thing yeah. in, in that we're finding payments yeah. for indigent. No, that's right. No, I've, I've, the honor of everybody here is not in question. It's just getting the precise number. So uh, what I suggested to George is we just defer this. Uh, but I think Anne-Marie McChrystal has a better idea. And <laughs> As always. <laughs> I, I, I'm not supposed to hear her ideas except in public, so I'm going to confess that I overheard her talking about this. I'm going to turn it over to her and let her <laughs> make this proposal. At this meeting, you overheard it. Uh, At this meeting. Oh, that's okay? All right. At this meeting, you heard that. Well, what, what she suggested, and I think it's a good idea, because the million four sixty six sounds like an enormous surge in volume, and in fact, that's about half the issue. The other half of the issue is the hospital came in George and, and Warren came in a year ago and asked for 7,263,000, as I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, and, <coughs> well, I recall it because I looked it up here. Because uh, <laughs> it's right there. And, but in our wisdom, to, in order to keep the millage rate down, we only budgeted flat from what the actual results were in the previous fiscal year. And so that results in a gap of about $900,000. Uh, the rest of the 466 is the increased volumes, which we don't know the details of. So Anne Marie's idea is we should go ahead and pay you the 904, like you originally requested. So if we'd budgeted the way we really should have, you would have that money right now. 
and we'll sort out all these. I've got a pen right here. Uh, okay, we'll sort out all these other issues over the next month or so. Okay. <laughs> uh, that would, and I think that's a good idea, and I would, so I would recommend that. Is this that. a motion? I would like to move that. Okay. Second. I think it's appropriate, and I'll second it. How's that? Is there it? Yeah. What's the motion? Let's say that again. The new. Well, the math I came up with is that we go ahead and pay the hospital out of the million four sixty six that they asked for. We pay them nine hundred four thousand six hundred and seventy dollars now, and we we'll leave. Number coming from Ellen, please. Uh, if you look at the, the, that same sheet on the back, you'll see the amount they requested, mm -hmm. seven two sixty three, and then the actual year to date uh, uh, oh, budget yeah. of uh, six million three. 38. However, we've actually overpaid them. Correct. So, so I'm going to do a different number. Right. So, so yeah, I'm going to have to. It'd be better, Anne Marie, if you could talk to me outside of <laughs> sunshine, and I could have been prepared for this, but I do think it's a good idea. So it's column four, which is 7263118 minus the 64941181. Yes. And I can't do that in my head. No, I'm trying. I've got. Sorry, I have 768,937 by yeah, my calculator. About right. You guys could just make a motion to resolve that figure based on the discussion. Right. Had. Yeah, let's right. do that. Okay. okay. Well, can you make a motion? Either Alan or Emory, one of you. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Right. So the, the difference between the original budget and what we have paid so far is what we want to pay yeah. immediately. No, 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 no. We want the original the request. The original, original request. request. The original request versus what we have paid. And I just want to clarify why my thinking. When we, we have agencies come to us, if what they have worked very hard to get to be their needs, we have to base that. volume, but he did predict what he expected, and we were second-guessing that, and so I feel that it's only fair that you not be so compromised at the end of your fiscal year that you have some influx of dollars, and then we can go back and figure out what wasn't expected, but just was sort of a, um, you know, an additional amount of pay, because you only get paid what you do. You, you are paid So thank you very much. We that was a long appreciate motion. that. That's okay. very long. I'm, I'm getting like I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've had a motion and we had it seconded. Is there any other discussion amongst the trustees? Okay. Then we will take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay. We will go ahead and do that. And then you and Alan can work on the differential. That's correct. And for next month, we'll mm -hmm. expect you back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank we you, greatly appreciate it. Uh, the second topic I wanted to talk about was our results through August. Um, I've handed that out to you, and I have the consolidated, which is the hospital, the physician practice, and the diagnostic imaging center results, 11 months ended in August, um, and wanted to talk briefly about the volume changes, uh, the revenue expenses, and bottom line that we see. Um, so if we start at the first column on the left is our actual results for 11 months ended, and then we have the budget as a second column, and last the prior year, 11 months ended August um, as a third, and then the variance on the right-hand side. Um, if we start with inpatient admissions, we came in for 11 months at 14.3. Um, we had budgeted 13.4, and last year we had 13.5. So we have a significant increase in the number of inpatient admissions, uh, almost a thousand more than uh, budget, at seven percent. 
observation, which are basically um, patients in the hospital in an outpatient setting, uh, I'm sorry, on the medical surgical floor setting, but categorized only as observation, uh, and came in at 6,000. We had budgeted 6,100. Last year we were at 6,200, so we had a slight decrease. Uh, overall, when you talk about um, patients coming through the door, we ended up with 20,351. Uh, we had budgeted 19,550, and we had 19,800 last year. So 800 more um, patients through the door, 4% increase uh, coming into the hospital. On the days, which are the, the number of um, days that the patients are up in beds, uh, we came in at 58,283. Uh, 54,000.4 was what we budgeted. So we had a 7% increase in uh, patient days, but that increases our daily census, um, and it's a 7% a increase. You'll see an increase in our st uh, staffing related to those um, because nurses and caregivers have to give uh, the care for those increased days and the increased daily census as well. When you look at our emergency room visits, came in at 58,108. Uh, 56,000 was what we had budgeted, so there's uh, 1,900 more uh, emergency visits, 3.4% increase over budget. Surgeries, uh, significant increase in surgeries as well. At 7,885, uh, we had budgeted 7,400, so we had a 6.6% increase in, in uh, surgeries. And the physician practice visits came in um, slightly under budget, um, and what happened there is we, we no longer employed our emergency visit, uh, physicians, so those visits are not included in these numbers, so that's the variance related to it. When we talk about my favorite number, the revenue, we came in at, the hospital came in at 216,000, I'm sorry, 216,700,000. We had budgeted 208 million, which is a 4% increase over what we had budgeted for. <clears throat> Our physician practice came in at um, 49 million. Um, 55 is what we budgeted for, and again, it, it's the change related to the physicians in the ED. Um, and in VRA, we came in at 10.6 million, and we are 6% lower than what we had budgeted for. Overall, our net revenue is 276 million for the 11 months. Um, we budgeted 275, so we're about a million dollars over budget. On the revenue, slightly over under a half a percent. On our personnel cost, <coughs> we came in at 150.7 million. We budgeted 149.2 million, so we're one percent over budget. Uh, when you look at the volume at, up at the top, you can see where most of that's occurring. Our supplies, um, we with all those surgeries, we are seeing a lot more very expensive prosthetic surgeries that we're doing with hips, knees, heart valves, and spines. <coughs> and so we see a very large growth related to the supplies. Again, with a 6% increase in, 6.6% increase in surgeries, um, we're seeing that come through on the supply line. Overall, our total expenses at IRMC came in at $260.5 million. We budgeted $256 million, so we're over budget on the expense by $3.7 million of 1.4%. And that gives us income before depreciation, EBITDA, of 15, almost $16 million compared to $18.9 million in the budget. So we're, uh, we earned um, $3 million less on our EBITDA than what we had budgeted for, and depreciation is very close to budget. So... With all that said, in a long-winded way, our excess over deficit, our excess of revenue over expenses for the year, 11 months ended, is $2.78 million. We had budgeted $5.5 million, and so we're under budget on the income line by 2.8. And I would like to add that during the year, we have invested in some caregivers, some significant investments in caregivers in the nursing areas uh, to the tune of about 1.5 above and beyond budget and a way to add additional staff and, and increase wages so that we can keep them and have turnover less. So um, a significant portion of this budget variance is related to unbudgeted but uh, needed changes that we did in the hospital. Does that make sense?
Any questions? Well, I just point out that <clears throat> while you said it was under budget in terms of your F excess of revenues over deficit over uh, expenses, it's versus a loss last year. So you improved from a deficit to. Yes, that's correct. I, I would. You got to work on your marketing, George. You may be aware that we're going through a transition of <laughs> action too, and what's in this number that really wasn't budgeted for was significant costs, yeah. probably to the tune of about $2 million that impacted us related to the wonderful and well thought out process to get us to Cleveland Clinic. Yeah, okay. More money well spent. That's a good point. I know. Well said. That is a good point. So, is thus endeth August. Do you, would you like to talk ab about the budget for 2019. Suits me. Sure. Sure. So if you go to the this um, document, we have th four pages. We have the consolidated, we have the hospital, we have the physician practice, and we have the diagnostic imaging center. Overall, I had presented this budget to our finance committee, and there were a lot of good comments. Um, I've taken those comments and in, um, we've done our budget. Um, the biggest one, which was we need to improve the bottom line on our diagnostic imaging. We've done that. So our bottom line that we're projecting for this budget going forward, assuming no changes with the Cleveland Clinic coming in, which I can't begin to articulate, mm -hmm. but it will all be good. Um, we're looking at a $4.2 million bottom line going forward. Um, the detail of that is broken out on the next pages. Um, from the hospital perspective, just to put things into perspective, <clears throat> the budget at the hospital is looking to be about a, a $10.4 million bottom line. Um, there's subtle increases in volume related to new services for um, the stroke program and behavioral health uh, resources that we've invested in. Um, and we've also planned for some shift to outpatient surgeries as well. On the physician practice, there were a lot of changes going on related to that, but we plan a, a loss of $7.6 million, which is an improvement from last year of $1.5 million. <coughs> and for this, uh, for the Diagnostic Imaging Center, we're planning a bottom line of $1.6 million which is along the lines of when we took over a couple years ago. So I am certainly open for questions. I have a question. We had uh, came up in our meeting yesterday uh, about the utilities and FPL coming in and all that. Are you budgeting for a savings relative? No, we have not done that. Okay. So we've so taken our... That could be a bonus. Absolutely. All right. For every bonus, there's unknowns, but... <laughs> yeah, I, no, I understand that, but... Um, just out of curiosity, because there was a lot of numbers that were kind of thrown around yesterday at what the p that potential savings might be. Do you have any feel for that? Someone had asked me that, and, and I calculated, but it's a 30% savings, and I'm not sure exactly, I think a 30% savings, I'm not sure exactly what our utility spend is, but I, I'm thinking one and a half million dollars of spend, so 30% of that is a half, half million maybe, mm -hmm. depending on when that happens and when the rates change, of course. Right which I'm not sure when that is happening. But. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if I can believe the numbers here, there's a line item that says utilities. Right. Would that be it? I'm glad you have my back. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that's what is projected 8.8 that? uh, like million. Yeah. Take 30% off that, that's a big number. Mm. Yeah, but, but that might not all be just electric. 2018 was 7 million, so that's a big increase in utilities yeah. budget, according, if I'm reading this right. Yeah, well, we brought on um, health and wellness, mm -hmm. and. More over here, too. Because so. there's going to be a savings at the. I, I can get that to everyone. Your radiology as yeah, well. Radiology. So it's going to be. Mm. Uh, anyway. Will you all be in here? It's all consolidated. Oh, it's consolidated. It's all consolidated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a lot of money, yeah. Just something to better understand, I guess. You know, any other questions for George on this? Potentially could be a lot of change in there. So. Right. Beautiful, uh, wonderful change, so. <laughs> Thank you all.
My Thank pleasure. you, George. You know, for, for what it's worth, uh, this is Nothing. really a good job of budgeting and execution that I think should be mentioned in public. Thank you. I have so an awesome team. I think yeah, everyone good. works very well together. And we make the right decisions, I think. It's a good turnaround. Thank you. Very much. Okay. We'll move on to our funded agencies. Uh, Vicki for Treasure Coast Community Health. Can you bring me up, Kate? Yeah. I, okay. Okay. Good evening. My name is Vicki Soule, CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health, and I'm here to give you your annual report. Our calendar year actually is our fiscal year, um, so we're only three quarters of the year into it, but um, we have wonderful technology that allows us to slice and dice this information. So let me see if I can do this. Ta-da. Okay, so most of you know um, very much what we do, primary medical, dental, behavioral health care. We offer pharmaceutical uh, services, and um, we have been recognized for several years now, four or five, as a patient-centered medical home, which means we integrate care um, between those primary services and take care of all people regardless of their ability to pay. Um, we have this year been recognized by HRSA, the Human Services Resource Administration, um, one of our main funders, as a quality leader, um, placing us in the top 30% of all community health centers across the country. Well, I don't know which way to look. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little swivel head right now. Um, so what does that mean? Um, I'll break it down very briefly for you. In addition to placing in the top 30% in terms of our quality measures, in terms of clinical quality measures, um, we also are judged against all of our peers, 1,300 across the country, um, in certain areas. Uh, clinical quality improvers means that you have to have made at least a 10% improvement in one or more of the clinical quality measures between 16 and 17. You have to have used your electronic health record for everything that you do, all data, all patient admission information. You have to show that you show and demonstrate in hard numbers that you have enhanced access to care for your community um, so that the actual absolute numbers are increased. Um, you have to show that you have delivered high value care awards, and this is probably, as all of us in the healthcare industry know, the most challenging um, piece that we have to do. Um, not that providing quality care is easy um, in our diverse population, but this really talks about um, how did we do it in a cost effective uh, manner while improving patient access. The next thing is accessing and improving health disparity information so that at least 10% uh, improvement and striving closer to the Healthy People, people Awards um, are shown across different racial and ethnic groups. That's why we ask all of our patients a lot of information that they think is really intrusive, um, but this is required by the government to compare us to see where are there opportunities for us individually to improve. And then, of course, advancing our health information systems to increase access to care and advance the quality of care that we give because we are now working with uh, 216 hospitals across the state of Florida that may receive patients and then follow up to Treasure Coast. This allows us to track patients and do follow up on our own patients and say, I see that you had a visit at XYZ Hospital. How are you doing? How can we help you? So it's using the technology that exists throughout the state, not just taking the um, information that we ourselves collect. So uh, of course, everyone wants to know, how did we do financially? How did we do number-wise? Um, let's look at that. In medical visits, we exceeded our previous year to date by 19%. That is a little bit higher than what we're doing throughout all of our centers for everyone at a 17% increase. The number of patients we served is also a 16% increase. It's about 8% 8, 8 of the Treasure Coast Community Health total at 1,349 patients that saw us during the year for some sort of medical care and health. And as you can see, if you're good at math, um, 
2,900 is about double 1,300, so that means that each patient on average was seen about 2.2 times, and that's pretty average. Vicki, uh, I'm sorry, would you sure. say that the, the tax dis district folks are what percent of your total? The number of patients are 8% 8 of 8 our medical of patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw 16,118 patients throughout all of our centers for medical services, and those that the district has reimbursed us for, the unduplicated count throughout the whole year was 1349. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, let me see what else is pertinent. 12% uh, of those patients are uninsured, by the way, uh, so that is a little bit higher than um, one might expect, but that is, again, our overall. Um, we're seeing that number rise as the impact of the Affordable Care Act and Trump's initiatives have um, decreased the number of people carrying any kind of insurance. Moving on to behavioral health, uh, again, you can see that we've had substantial increases both as a subunit of our total population as well as the total population itself. Um, we saw 1,056 patients um, for visits. That means that 199 of them saw a behavioral health counselor or psychiatrist four to five times or more during the year. Um, that compares, again, to a 39% increase in visits um, overall for our population with 13,534 visits happening with 2,300 patients. The number of people below 150% of federal poverty level and the percent of patients who were uninsured has pretty much remained the same um, from 16 into 17 and now into 18. Vicki, could I ask you a question? Absolutely. I'm sorry to change the time, but I'll be real brief. Um, these are people that actually have qualified to be reimbursed. And we have been reimbursed for that number. Right. Mm -hmm. but It could, except as you look at the number of people that are seeing Treasure Coast in behavioral health services below 150%, you've already got 78% of the folks in that bucket. Yeah. So you might see some increase, but honestly, our total data does not show a sharp incline over 150. Now that may be because there's other providers in town, over 150, they may be already um, having insurance that allows them the flexibility to go somewhere other than Treasure Coast, but I couldn't answer. Um, no problem. Okay, dental services. Um, dental services also went up, but not to the extent that we thought it would. Um, as you can see, uh, your slice was a 17% increase. Uh, that was 9% under budget, um, and that is the only service line that we over budgeted on. Um, but as you see that that sort of follows what happened to us overall with an 8% decrease. And I can tell you why that's happening and we've taken measures to correct it. Our dentists have many people who have lots of serious problems that come into them. Dental is just one of them. And many of these people have not had a regular primary care visit with a physician in some time. And so there have been uh, circumstances where patients do not reflect all of their allergies or all of their medicines. You know, uh, white coat syndrome, they get in there and they're anxious about what they're, what's gonna happen to them. Many of them have not seen a dentist either for a very long time. And so when they get in there and they're asked these questions, do you have any allergies? No. Well, the reality is, is we've gotten caught a couple of times where no was really yes, and these people have had reactions to antibiotics or Motrin or other things that they have in their history. And so we, our dentist said, you know, we want to take the best care. We do not want to cause any harm. So they asked us, again, in integrating and providing total care for patients, if we could have them either send a medical record over from someone they had seen within the last year or see one of our people. And that has been going on for a couple of years. We've had a changeover of staff, as many of us have, because of the changing economics and improved hiring options in the county. And so our new people have been asking, we want to see a physical. Well, when they get a physical, now that's a different billing issue. Most 
it, those that do have insurance can only get one physical paid for by their insurance within a certain time period. And so that's acted as sort of a hand up, stop, you're not going to get in our dental area. And so we've been trying to figure out why were these volumes dropping. And it was so obvious when one of us went out to the lobby and it says you cannot receive dental care unless you can give us a physical from the last year. Well, that is absolutely not true. We want some medical history. We would recommend that you give us a release of information form to get that. But we want to take care of dental problems, okay? We want to bring you along the continuum of care. Our job is to remove barriers, not create them, okay? So I want all to know um, that is changing. Um, as you have seen many times, the number of uninsured patients that we see overall is 20% in our dental area. That means that 80% of the people that come to us do have some sort of insurance. It may be medical as opposed to covering dental, though I want to be clear on that. Our system does not differentiate which of those um, insurances they have. Um, any questions on that? So we'll drum roll to the bottom line, next page. The district reimbursement, and again, looking at what we budgeted, um, came off of our uh, dollars requested and then actual budgeted amount um, given and then pushed back to the number of encounters that we could expect for that. Um, you didn't harm our dental budget, and we over budgeted um, in light of what actually happened. I think we'll see that come back up as people understand that it was not to create barriers. Um, so we are within uh, a very small amount of actually being right on target. Okay. So the 950, is that what you requested or is that what we budgeted? That's what you budgeted. And what did you request? We requested more for medical and behavioral health, but it did even out so. And, and that's what we had said at the beginning. If it didn't even out, I could come back on behalf of the patients for Treasure Coast Community Health and ask for an adjustment. And even in August, we were going, eh, it's going to be really close. So um, it ended up just fine. Okay. Thank you very much for your consideration. We do, as you say, put a lot of effort into it. But there's always things that happen that you don't expect. Just one of those lessons that we need to keep in mind. Yeah, People flexibility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vicki. Appreciate it. Great job. Brett, mental, talk to us about the Mental Health Collaborative. And medication. Good evening. Can I get medication? So yes, the Mental Health Collaborative is just tying up its second full fiscal year. It's hard to believe that we've been doing this for two years already, and in some ways we feel like we've been doing this forever, but um, two years. And we've been uh, busy with all kinds of initiatives. We continue to support the Mental Health Court Program with uh, Judge Cox, under the leadership of Judge Cox and Sheriff Lohr. Um, and the outcome measures for that program continue to be excellent. They're serving 125 persons and community members in that program currently. And on the 30th of this month, they're going to graduate 20 people from that program. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's really going well. Um, another thing, we just completed our first community education uh, political advocacy luncheon. We had that a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, as leaders of our organization, we all run to Representative Grawl and Senator Mayfield with our individual needs. Uh, you know, we all have our self-serving interest, and we have to re represent ourselves. But this community education forum was designed to bring the community together and show Representative Grawl and Senator Mayfield's office that we work together on is collective issues that impact us all. Um, we had some great discussions. It, it turned out really well. It was well received. We had some good discussions. Uh, you know, an example of something we can work on is Medicaid reform. So as, as some people know and others may not, is we have five to six Medicaid providers uh, in, our, in our area alone. And what the providers, Vicki and John here, what they have to do is that's five different applications for, for uh, credentialing. And they have to credential all of their providers um, with five different people. The man hours and resources that that takes is immense. If we could work on a statewide Medicaid credentialing reform where there was a centralized way to do one application and credential everybody once, the, the 
resources that we would save would be immense. So that's just one example. There's another um, insurance company in town that's um, doing some moves that's limiting access to care. So that impacts us all. Most every provider except two for behavioral health has dumped that insurance plan. So access to care for those folks has been a major issue. So we can work together on issues like that, just some examples. So we're working on that. Uh, we continue to support the Guardian Advocate Program as you, for the whole 19th Circuit. Um, as you know, this program uh, provides advocates for those who do not have anybody else to advocate on their behalf during times of incapacity um, to be uh, substitute decision makers for them. Um, they the 19th Circuit came to us and asked for help. They went from zero advocates to we now we've trained over 11 people and we've advocated for almost 100 people in, in our county in, uh, well in the circuit um, over the past year. So that's been very successful, yeah. Um, and of course the McCabe Connection Center um, continues to get busier by the moment. As you see, I, I submitted some reports for you to review. Uh, we've seen almost 2,000 people since we opened, um, and the volume continues to increase. We saw 132 people last month, which is higher than average. We average about 90, a little bit more than 90, but um, that continues to increase. We uh, secured a psychiatric appointment with a psychiatric provider for 101 people that needed to see somebody within five days or they would end up in the emergency department or inpatient psychiatry. And we got an appointment for all 101, actually 99 of them was within five days. The other two were within eight days. So, <laughs> um, but we've secured a psychiatric appointment um, within five to eight business days for 101 people in our community. Um, we, our satisfaction scores, which are included, um, overall our, our, page, our community has rated us a 4.9 on a five point scale. So they're happy with the work that we're doing. And we included on their report some of the comments that they made when we did some of our follow up calls. Um, and then we will have our membership meeting uh, next week, next Wednesday. And what that is, is uh, we do a status in the spring and then this is the big one in the fall where we will talk with the community, the membership, anyone that's interested about what we've done over the past year. More importantly, what we learned from the people we saw in the McCabe Connection Center over the year, and then what our initiatives and have our membership and our community vote and, and talk about what should we work on in the coming year. So that membership meeting is next week. So let me um, just give you a preview for that, but don't tell anybody because they won't come to my meeting then next week. <laughs> um, so what we learned is- Or on is television, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come anyway because we'll have breakfast. So <laughs> that's what bring free breakfast. <laughs> um, some of the things we learned over the past year is we have several insurance difficulties. We have uh, limited access to care for a few of the insurances that are being sold and marketed in our town. So we need to take a look at that. Um, what was really surprising to us is since the opioid legislation that was passed and enacted July 1st, which um, made physicians go through training on prescribing opioids and um, ensured that physicians were using the statewide database so to make you know, doctor shopping more difficult. Since then, we have received many calls from patients that have been prescribed opioids, but mostly benzodiazepines from their primary care physicians for the past 5, 10, 20 years, and now those physicians will not, do not want to continue to, will not continue to prescribe those. So they need a new provider. So that is squeezing our system um, for our psychiatric providers even more. We have, I mean, it was tight to begin with, we were making it work, but now we have this whole new influx of people um, that are needing to see a psychiatric provider. Um, we see, we've seen, which is re really good, p an increase in people seeking substance abuse services. Um, it was much more this year than last. And w last year we identified I is um, services for substance abuse in our county w was not as robust as it could be. And that's increased. I mean, we worked with the community. We, we let them know that. And we have several new programs and providers in town that are providing substance abuse treatment. So that's a good thing. Um, affordable housing is a major problem. Uh, I think it's always been a problem and it's significantly worse this year than last year. In the short two years that we've been doing this, we've seen the increases in rent and affordable housing anywhere from 10 to 25 percent. 
in a year. Um, we worked with, so far we worked with 100 people on housing issues. We were managed, uh, we were able to place uh, a little 30, 31 people in permanent affordable housing. So we've made some inroads, but I think it's- Inside of this county though. I'm sorry? Inside of this county. No, that's inside this- Inside this county? I think a few of them have been maybe outside, but most of them, a vast majority are, are in this county. Yeah, well, I mean, our, our leader on uh, housing is the Treasure Coast Homeless Services Council. So that's where we refer everyone initially. And that, yes, they help, they help almost everybody in town, but there, there are people that just don't fit. I mean, Louise Hubbard is, is exceptional at what she does, but she has buckets of money, different buckets of money, and some people just don't fit into those buckets. And she's very creative in helping you know, other folks, but there's some people that just, that don't fit. And so then they come to us, and those are the folks that we, we work on. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is another real interesting scenario, is uh, there's been a huge increase. We've noticed it here, um, but we've also looked at this on a national level, an increase in persons applying for Social Security disability insurance, so permanent disability. Um, what used to be, and we've been very successful, um, we have a benefit specialist, uh, Denise Sednick, a source spe trained specialist who's excellent at doing this. Um, and and she's, she is uh, getting somebody every week, seven to 10 days approved for Social Security Disability Insurance. Wow. So that's great. But there is such an increase in applications. If you have to file a formal appear that will go to administrative uh, hearing, it used to be a six month wait, it's now a two year wait nationwide. Say that one again, please. If you, if the, it is a P, if it's denied, you go through the first level of appeal. If that's denied, you go to a, the, the, the last stance is an administrative court hearing where you sit in front of a judge, a magistrate, or whomever. Um, that was, used to take six months. It's, they're now scheduling two years out. Wow. But that's after two denials. That, that, that's the, the second denial, yes. Second. Yeah, but that's going to be a problem. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's, that's, something that we should at least talk about at least yeah so those are some of the things that we have learned um, over the years and that we're going to address at our membership meeting and work on some different initiatives for next year um, financial uh, fiscal wise uh, we just ended our fiscal year we have our preliminary results obviously unaudited uh, we came in thirty thousand dollars under budget so seven almost seven and a half percent under budget so we saw a lot of people and we did it cheaply Good job. More Good job. <laughs> Efficiently. Thank you. See that? Efficiently. Efficiently. Right. <laughs> now, right. well, you're providing a very important service in this community. And more and more people are getting to hear you, I think, or getting to understand who you are and what you do. So I think that's why you're, you're seeing more and more people, too. Right? That's great. Send them over. It's good. It's <laughs> all good. We have. <laughs> Any right. questions for Brett? Yes. And I think that's what it's all about. Oh, absolutely. We could not have done this. We, we don't do this. The community does this. The providers do this. The, we had our joint agency team meeting today, which is people from all provider agencies in the county. Uh, they get together every other month just to network, talk about the new programs and services they have. We used to have five, ten people. We had 35 people crammed into our small office wow. today with standing room only. So we have our solo practitioners. Um, we, the collaborative struggled for years to bring the, the you know, the, the shingle, the, the one person office, the solo practitioners in town. There was never somebody to help them coalesce and work with each other. Uh, we've had several meetings. Uh, the last one, we had 17 people that had never been to the collaborative before. So we're touching the community. That's awesome. I think. Yes. Um, I think that was a great event. I think at least annually, if not twice a year. Because that's how people get their message. Yeah. To them, and then they can report back as to where they are. Absolutely. And that's important. Spring and fall, I think. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, it, it, it turned out really well. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you yeah. so much, Brett. Appreciate it. Um, any unfinished business? And I think, John, we have you as new business relative to New Horizons. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, let me pass out something. I think I'm going to be easier than everybody else. Um, I hope so, anyway. I have an invite. <laughs> going to say you don't. Got more information. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, um, directors. For the record, John Romano. I'm the CEO of New Horizons. Um, what you're looking at <laughs> is the. Uh, Services provided for the period 10-1, 2017 through 930, which is your fiscal year. Our fiscal year is a little bit different, but that doesn't make any difference. What we're asking for is, uh, if you have any surplus dollars, is $10,000, $10,402 to make us whole. Um, somewhere in the middle of August, I don't have an exact date, we ran out of, of, the, of the funds in the two categories of psychiatric evaluations and uh, medication management. Um, the other categories, as you can see, uh, went, went underspent by, by a little bit of money. And um, so we applied that to the, to the bigger picture. That's where we came up with the $10,402 uh, in, uh, in uh, money that we did not receive. So um, what we're asking for is uh, is that uh, ten thousand four hundred two dollars to make us whole? If if in fact you have the budget for that, uh, the unduplicated clients is one hundred and forty two for that time frame, and we provided um, nine hundred and fifty point seven five services. This is just for for your folks. It's not a right. Indian River County is huge right. in terms of the numbers, as you probably already know that. And these numbers have been again audited. This is right. Yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Okay. Um, so, do we have the funds? No. No. Okay. Uh, I believe that we had a phase one of business as far as the building is concerned. I second. Is there any <coughs> other conversation relative to that? No. They're doing a great job. And okay. Yep. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, That's thank you very much. And, and in case I don't see you guys, it's been a pleasure to work with you over the years. I'm leaving at the end of December. <laughs> I lost track there. End of December. Uh, well, maybe we have to have you come back one more time yeah. for a final report in December. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Congratulations. I'll, 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 Congratulations. I'll, I'll be glad to come back. And Congratulations, <laughs> and uh, the Everything. community will miss you. Well, thank you very much, and, and, and thank you for caring about the people we serve. It, it is much appreciated. We do. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other business? Trustees? Any public comment? Other than wishing you a happy birthday. Uh, no, all right, stop. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair and, tr and revered tr trustees, um, I am Lundy Fields, the VNA CEO. And just on behalf of the VNA, VNA, we just want to say we thank you for your commitment and dedication that you've shown to serve this county uh, through your leadership, your stewardship. Your strategic healthcare vision, uh, you have led this county extremely well. Uh, we thank you for opening your hearts and your minds to serving the most vulnerable people in this county. And we'll be working hard. We thank you for the six months of funding for the Vulnerable Village Initiative. And we'll be working very hard to bring you preliminary compelling results uh, from clinical and programmatic outcomes that will lead us to another six months of funding. So I just want to say thank you for all that you've done for us as the citizens of Indian River County. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lundy. We look forward to seeing those reports. All right. We do. No, we don't. Oh, no, sing we're not happy singing. Birthday. <laughs> Any other public comment? <laughs> we're not singing. Okay, thank you all. <laughs> Have a good evening. <laughs>